Annie Bell was the focus of a case that famed paranormal investigators Ed and Laureen Warren. This took place during the early 1970s and is the highlight of the book, The Demonologist. It has been stated that this is one of the most famous, weird, and unusual cases of a possessed object on record. In 1970, a mother purchased an antique Raggedy Ann doll from a hobby store. The doll was a present for her daughter Donna on her birthday. Donna at the time was a student in college preparing to graduate with her nursing degree and resided in a tiny apartment as they lacked much money with her roommate Angie, who happened to be a nurse as well. Pleased with the doll, Donna placed it on her bed as a decoration of sorts and didn't really give it a second thought, at least until a few days later. Within that time, both Donna and Angie noticed that there appeared to be something very odd, very strange, and very creepy about this weird doll. The doll apparently moved on its own, relatively unnoticeable movements at first, like a change of position. But with the passage of time, the movement became quite noticeable. Donna and Angie would come home to find a doll in a completely different room from which they had left it. Sometimes the doll would be found cross-legged on the couch, arms folded. Other times it would be found upright, standing on its feet, leaning against a chair in the dining room. Several times, Donna placing the doll on the couch before leaving to work, she would return home to find the doll back in her room, on the bed, with the door closed even though they distinctly remember leaving it open. One night, Donna came home to find that the doll had moved again. This time, it was on her bed. Donna had come to find that this was typical of the doll, however, somehow, she knew that this time it was different. Something wasn't right in this situation. A sense of fear came over her when she inspected the doll and saw what looked like blood droplets on the back of its hand and chest. Seemingly from nowhere, a li red liquid had appeared on the doll. Scared and desperate, Donna and Angie decided to seek some expert advice. Not knowing where to turn, they contacted a medium and a seance was held. Donna was introduced to the spirit of Annabelle Higgins. The medium related the story of Annabelle to both Donna and Angie. Annabelle was a young girl that resided on the property before the apartment was built. She was a young girl of only seven years old when her lifeless body was found in a field upon which the apart apartment complex now stands. The spirit related to the medium that she had felt comfort with Donna and Angie and wanted to stay with them by moving into the doll. Feeling compassion for Annabelle and her story, Donna gave her permission to inhabit the doll and stay. They were soon to find out, however, that Annabelle was not as she seemed. Lou was friends with Donna and Angie, and had been with them since the day the doll had arrived. He had never been fond of the doll, and on several occasions he even warned Donna that the damn thing was evil, saying that they should flat out just get rid of it, throw it the window, in the trash can, whatever. However, Donna developed a personal tie to the doll and decided to keep it, despite Lou's feelings. Her decision was her final and most terrible mistake. One night, Lou awoke with a jolt of terror, a jolt that didn't seem like it was from his usual nightmares. However, this felt different. What would appear to be a common case of sleep paralysis became all too real. He looked around the room, but he couldn't discern anything out of the ordinary. At first, anyway. Looking down towards his feet, he saw the doll, Annabelle. He began to slowly glide up his leg, moving over his chest and stopping at his neck. Helpless against it, the doll began to strangle him. After a moment, Lou started to get to the point of anaphylactic shock, and then blacked out. He woke the next morning, certain that this was an ordinary night terror, and was determined to get rid of himself, at least get rid of himself of that doll, and that spirit that possessed it. Preparing for a road trip the next day, Lou and Angie were reading over the maps of the loner apartment. The apartment was eerily quiet, and silence broke in with a few rustling sounds coming from Donna's room. Aroused from the fear that someone had broke in, Lou determined that the figure determined to figure out what was causing the noise. Quietly, he made his way to the bedroom door. He waited for the noises to stop before entering and turning the light on. The room was empty, ex 
except for Annabelle, whom t was tossed in the corner of the floor. Lou searched the room for signs of forced entry, but nothing was out of the place. As he got closer to Dahl, he got this distinct impression that somebody was behind him. Spinning around, Lou found that despite his unease, no one was besides him, and the doll was the only thing that was really in the room. Then, in a flurry of motion, he found himself doubled over in pain, with blood dripping out from the cut on his chest upon an opening of his shirt. There on his chest, what appeared to be seven distinct claw marks. <laughs> Today, I hope you enjoyed this article, and should you ever want to visit the infamous Annabelle doll, she can be found at the Warren Occult Museum in M Moodus, Connecticut. The museum is run by Lorraine Warren, the famous paranormal investigator, now a frequent gas television show at Paranormal State. Housed in a glass case at the museum, you will find Annabelle. Miss Warren relates to Annabelle, still moves about occasionally, and still known to make growling noises at unsuspecting visitors.